if you apply the same principles to develop love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll get there. Ashaddu khubba lillah. How? You think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. And that will only come when you study Quran with tafsir. If not every day, at least once a week, one hour. So I would recommend 15 to 20 minutes every day. We can easily pull out this time. Because if we, if we cut out all the trash activities from our life, then talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell Him your needs in sajda. Just informally. Then even formally. And yes, once you develop this passion for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's my Lord, He's my Khalik, He's my Rabb. Look what he has given me. Look how much he cares about me. Look how he forgives me. Look what blessings he has given me. And not just in this life, he's there always with me. Anyone can ditch me, not him. And I don't even have to be afraid. I don't even have to hide. I don't even have to feel guilty when I have to love him. When you feel this passion, that's when you're ready to do anything for him. Namaz is no issue. Hijab is no issue. Fasting is no issue. You get this clarity in your life. Major clarity in your life. And that's a thrill ride. If you don't have this thing, if you are not feeling all these things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kuch nahi kiya apne zindagi mein. Kuch nahi kiya. And I would recommend all of you to try it. Feel to kare Allah ki mohabbat. You will get amazing results. And as I said, without any guilt. Then in Surah Al Imran, verse number 31, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Kul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabiuni. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you really love Allah, then follow me. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told to tell us. If we claim, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have reached that point, reached that pinnacle. How does it show or reflect from my personality? Fattabi'uni. I follow the Prophet Wasallam In all my mannerism. Like for example, if we all over here love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we follow the Prophet Wasallam, what would we do? We'll first fill up the front seats. Then we'll gradually move back. Empty seats in between tell us what? We don't understand the principles of the gathering which we get from the life of the Prophet ﷺ. When I get up in the morning, how I dress up. When I walk in, how do I walk in? When I'm sitting, looking at some people, am I saying salam? How am I eating? Standing up or sitting down? Where I put the trash? You know, your university will transform if you do this. Fattabi'uni. Anyone walking in the university would know there are a lot of lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over here. There are people who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they are respecting their environment, their people, their teachers, their education. They are more into education. The love or the following of the Prophet sallallahu grooms us to such a level that it is unimaginable. And what will Allah do? Yuhbibkum Allah. Allah will love you. Because sometimes when we say, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I wonder if he loves me or not. Think the same thing for the haram love. But then he usko mit se mohabbat hai ki nahi hai. Pushte bhi hai. Do you love me? And he says, yes, I love you. And meanwhile he's chatting with someone else. Even for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes we wonder, does he love us? How would we know? My action would tell me. If I am following sunnah, he loves me. Yuhbibkum Allah. He doesn't stop over there. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ زُنُوبَكُمْ He will forgive our sins. He will not expose us. Because sometimes you have indulged in something which is not right. Suddenly you realize, I had taken a wrong course. Then you start working on yourself. Go in the halal direction. Work on your love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then your past starts haunting you. Sometimes people would tell you, Tum wo kya ab, tum Quran padna shiru ho gayi ho. Yaad hai wo jo tha, wo ladka, wo phir bhi pooch raha tha tumhara. Yaad hai we used to chat with this person. They will keep poking you. 
about the harams that you had been involved in. It could be minor or major. And then you, you come up with guilt. You get confused. You're like, I'm trying to make all this sacrifice. What if at the end of the day it will go all waste? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't worry. If you're following the sunnah way of life with this intention, I will love you, I will forgive you, and I will cover up all your sins. I'm not going to expose you like people are exposing you. They're not giving you space. You will get ample space. Wallahu ghafooru raheem. This is where Allah is ghafooru raheem. So how to let go? If you know someone, or if you're sitting over here thinking, what should I do now? Should I tell this guy, listen, I attended this talk today, and I realized I need to halt. He would give you 101 reasons to stay in that relationship. He will give you such a guilt. تو میں میں آخرت میں پوچھوں گا اب آپ کو اپنی آخرت کی پہلے ہی فکر تھی کہ آخرت میں حرام محبت کے لیے بھی بتانا پڑے گا میں تمہیں معاف نہیں کروں گا اچھا یہ معاف نہیں کرے گا نو ریمبر اف یو ہیو انوالو ان سم حرام یو ڈونٹ ہیو ٹو ایکسپلین ٹو ادر پرسن یو ڈونٹ ہیو ٹو جسٹیفائی لیٹ ہم ٹیل دا ہول ورلڈ وٹ اے بے وفا پرسن یو آر ان فیتھ فل ان لوئل پرسن لیٹ ہم ٹیل دا ہول ورلڈ You don't explain it to anyone. Just your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You just say, I have decided I'm done with. Khatam. Disconnect. You create a picture in your mind that helps you get over. Like something disgusting about haram love. Start reading those articles and stuff. Stop listening to tear-jerking obsessive songs. I'm listening to those songs. I'm listening to those songs. I'm listening to those songs. They're not. بارش بھی رو رہی میں بھی رو رہی میرا دل بھی رو رہا دین سی ہز فالٹس وچ ایکچولی آر دیئر بیکاز وی آر اے پیکیج آف گڈنیس اینڈ آبویسلی شارٹ کمنگس پٹ مائنڈ ٹو کنسٹرکٹو ورک ڈو سم تھنگ کنسٹرکٹو ان یور لائف رادر دین جسٹ سٹنگ اینڈ گیٹنگ بورڈ اینڈ جسٹ کرائنگ اوور دیٹ لاسٹ لو فیلنگ گلٹی اباؤٹ اٹ اینڈ کٹ آؤٹ آل کمیونیکیشن بلاکس کمپلیٹ بلاکس Even block the people in your life who are trying to build that connection. Tell them, sorry, don't talk about him. Don't say, وہ کل روئے تو نہیں تھے, کوئی بات تو نہیں کی تھی, تب یہ ٹھیک ہے ان کی. I can't talk to him, but تم خیال رکھنا. No, nothing like that. You have to safeguard yourself from all that. Now, when you give up a relationship on a relationship, you need to understand the stages of grief. Shock, denial, anger, resolution. Shock, is this really happening? Denial, this can't be happening. Anger, how can this happen to me? Most of the people, they stay in these three stages in a loop. They have intensive emotion and then they are very prone to go back in the same relationship or with someone else. And these days, we also have not only this haram love between male and female, there is haram love for same sex, which is also becoming a big issue for us. So you need to come to the stage of resolution. I will go through this. If I have made the right decision, inshallah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'll get over it. So how do you handle this love in the air? You have to do the relationship analysis. If you're involved with someone, what do you do? If you're not involved, what do you do? If you're legally involved, let's say you're engaged, you need to set limits because you're still non-mahram. I've seen many girls who had been seeing their fiancé, meeting him. He even said, we're getting married in six months' time, one year time. They have a physical relationship. She gets pregnant and he refuses. He says, I'm not marrying her. And they're in a bigger mess. Girls ask me, what about phone, meeting, chatting? I tell them, try not to indulge in all these things. Just through your parents. Just have a mahram in between. And if the guy gets upset about it, he's not worth marrying. If he doesn't respect your halal boundary, you have to realize what he can engage you in. And then you have to learn to handle all the demands that he's putting up. Simple. Allah comes first. If you're illegally involved, these are the false expectations. There's a lot of uncertainty. Even your parents are not happy. I haven't come across a parent who says, MashaAllah, my daughter is date on date. They are in so much panic. That's why they are always guarding you. When we get irritated, mom, you don't trust me. When you're young 
and it's cold the weather is cold would a 4 year old child when the mother is trying to put on a coat on him say mom you don't trust me i can go out in this chilly weather and not get sick similarly when you're in a younger age you are prone to this thing and your parents have passed through that age and they can see it and it is their right their responsibility to protect you and there is always feeling of the sinning so for those who are not involved this is another category many of you would say alhamdulillah i am safe even then you need to remember you are at risk and that is why you need to be even more careful you need to preempt everything enter any place very vigilantly do not look down at trapped one we think it's easy not to be involved but when someone gets involved then it's a bigger mess so the scene is yours what do you need to do you have to work on your desires from external perspective as well as internal perspective what do you do in the environment wala taqrabu zina innahu kana fahishatan wa sa'a sabila do not even go near those places do not even go near where there is zina close all the doors your friends are going for a movie no drama no songs no because they give me desires what do i do then have constructive work and hobbies in your life block all roads connect more to quran and keep watch on your uh, company you'll come across girls who are not uh, involved in anyone and they are happy it's it's rare but they are happy they are content with their life and then desires within us do not justify them illa ma qad salaf something has happened in the past don't have regrets to such an extent that you're always depressed tell yourself whatever happened happened now i'm going to move on early marriage this is again a dilemma many a times when you're young you're in a marriageable age and there are rishtas and you keep telling your parents abhi nahi i have passion career passion and then you come to that age when there are less options and now you are also miserable yourself so early marriages opt for early marriages make a comparison for yourself let's say i become very successful in life i achieve all my passions and i'm not married i don't have any halal relationship am i ready to go for that don't think at an emotional level think at a logical level and the other option is i am married i might get chance to study further i can study online or i can give up i have settled family so that option is there for you to decide and fasting till you get married fast ramadan and also weekly masroon fast you can even fast more than that and channelize all your energies you also need to learn to handle the blackmailers if he has my snaps you need to learn not to share your pictures with anyone don't put your pictures on the social media and whatever you have given then keep reciting inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun recite duas of protection whatever happened make excessive duas to allah subhanahu wa taala to safeguard you uh, should i tell my husband no you don't need to tell your husband because in the initial weeks of marriage sometimes girls make this mistake this blunder to mujhe apni life ke bare mein batao main tumhe batao and we start telling them and then there is a whole pandora box that opens up you just say let's talk about future if he finds out accidentally no problem he said tumne mujhe nahi bataya you say because it was past it was gone i didn't want to talk about it i want to focus on you and the future if that guy says i'm going to approach your parents and your husband ko kar lo you don't say anything usually these people are cowards they don't approach but if he approaches your father comes or mother comes up and says ye kya hai so his haath tha he was blackmailing me and i told him i'm not going to be blackmailed i made a mistake i admit to that but since he was blackmailing and i didn't go to him again that's why he has approached you be confident about the decisions you have taken so how do you satisfy the need for love we have talked about that love for allah love for the prophet religion family humanity the moment you start doing this you will feel things are going to be much better in your life uh, may allah bless you and may allah give us the strength that we develop this ashaddu hubbillah subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh